Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on gut microbalance. So as you can see here, our gut bacteria actually has a huge effect on our immune system. And in case you didn't know, 70% of our immune system lies in our gut. So we have something known as the GALT or the gastric associated lymphoid tissue. This actually resides in your stomach. And we have the MALT or the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. And this lymphoid tissue, they produce antibodies. And that's actually gonna help fight against bacteria and viruses and parasites and infections. And without having healthy gut balance and healthy, digest healthy digestion and healthy gut flora, it's gonna severely affect our immune system. So we have three main types of bacteria. We have beneficial bacteria. This could include like probiotics, um, lactobacillus, bifidobacter, various strains, longish, uh, brevis. Um, we even have soil-based probiotics that are also beneficial to our gut. We have commensal bacteria. Commensal are kind of like the switch hitters, right? They can go either way. They can, they can bat from both sides of the plate. And we're gonna talk about the stressors here below that can actually push them to one side or the other. Commensal can become beneficial bacteria or they can shift into pathogenic bacteria. And it's the key stressors that are really pushing them in one direction or the other. We also have pathogenic bacteria. Pathogenic bacteria could be bacteria infections, H. pylori, various parasites, um, C. difficile, right? Various infections that are pathogenic. And these guys, they produce toxins, right? whether it's um, mycotoxins or whether it's endotoxin or various biotoxins produced by infections. These infections also disrupt peristalsis, meaning the stool that should be coming out of our intestines into the toilet can take longer. And when that happens, our body can reabsorb a lot of toxins that are inside of us and that can literally poison us, right? Auto intoxication, right? Poisoning of the self. Uh, malabsorption, if, we don't, if we're not able to absorb certain nutrients and minerals, that's gonna have an effect on our energy systems, Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, uh, energy, because we need nutrition to run our energy pathways. And then leaky gut, obviously leaky gut is part of the malabsorption spectrum, but leaky gut's also driving autoimmune conditions because we have food molecules and bacteria infections that are going through a, a tight junction that should be like this, but now starts to open up so various cracks are forming and then food particles can slip through and those food particles that are slipping through go into the bloodstream where the immune system doesn't really see them too often. And the immune system starts creating and mounting a response to it. And what happens is we have a response of, hey, gluten molecule may look similar to the thyroid tissue or the nervous tissue or hey, that dairy may look similar to your pancreas and we have this molecular mimicry thing happening where other tissues are starting to get destroyed by a mistaken identity. So really important here. And again, the beneficial bacteria, I didn't really touch upon the benefits, but these bacteria produces nutrition, right? Vitamin K, it produces certain B vitamins. It's gonna help with breakdown of certain nutrients. It's gonna help with detoxification because we need certain nutrients and certain absorption of, of, of these nutrients to actually help run our detox pathways. If we don't have beneficial bacteria, we can actually produce these toxins known as, these enzymes um, known as beta-glucuronidase that can actually affect how bile conjugates hormones. So what happens is if bile comes in and binds to a hormone and conjugates it so it can be eliminated, this beta-glucuronidase can come in and uncleave it and then we can be reabsorbing all of these old hormones that were metabolized. So beta-glucuronidase and good bacteria levels are in inverse relationship. If we have beneficial bacteria levels, we're gonna have low um, beta-glucuronidase. So we need healthy bacteria so we can metabolize our hormones. Energy I already mentioned, detoxification I already touched upon. And again, like I already mentioned, the nutrition, Bacteria, the good bacteria in our gut also produces acids, certain acids like lactic acid or CO2. It can produce other beneficial acids that can lower the pH in our gut. When the, our pH in our gut's lower, it's harder for, uh, how should I say, um, bacteria that's bad or pathogenic to proliferate. So for instance, we know like yeast infections proliferate more in a alkaline urinary tract than an acidic urinary tract. That's why things like cranberry extract can be beneficial. Um, that's why things like resistant starch is beneficial because resistant starch can actually feed butyrate, 
Butyrate is butyric acid. The acid of butyrate helps decrease a lot of the microbes. Also, we need healthy HCL levels, healthy acid in the stomach. If we don't have good acid in the stomach, we can't break down our, our uh, proteins, we can't start protein metabolism, we can't ionize minerals. If we can't ionize minerals, we can't absorb minerals, right? Protein digestion starts in the stomach, so the first domino falls over in the stomach, and then if we don't have that domino, then the ability for our gallbladder to emulsify fat and for our pancreas to produce lipase and other enzymes that break down protein and fat won't fall. So beneficial bacteria keeps a nice lower pH, and it's very important for the, for the first domino of digestion to fall. So let's talk about factors that push gut bacteria in one direction or the other. So medications, right? I already alluded to it, especially proton pump inhibitors. This could be Nexium, this could be Prilosec, the purple pill, etc. cetera, Omniprazole for your over-the-counter meds. This is gonna shut down HCL production. I already talked about how HCL is very important for the first domino of digestion. Your esophageal sphincter right here at the top of your throat here, without enough acidity, that triggers the esophageal sphincter to close. So HCL will trigger the esophageal sphincter to close. If that doesn't close, then it's very easy for the acids to rise up and start burning your throat and creating a reflex disorder. So that's really important. We need acids to break down all of these nutrients. If we don't get good breakdown here, this creates a downward cycle and this problem gets worse and worse and worse. So finding the root causes and having a doctor pull you off this responsibly is very, very important. Don't just take it off yourself randomly. Sugar is really important because if we're eating too much refined and processed sugar, that's gonna be feeding a lot of bad bacteria in our gut. Uh, just look at the stats. From 100 years ago, we were eating about three to four pounds of sugar per, per year. Now that's upwards of 150 pounds. So myself, I'm probably on, on the lower end, maybe a couple pounds a year like they were 100 years ago. But if I'm doing only one or two or three pounds a year, well, someone else has got to be doing 300 pounds to average it out. So we have a significant increase in sugar consumption, which are feeding a lot of the funguses and pathogenic bacteria, causing them to kind of have a feeding frenzy, if you will. Emotional stress, right? We know that emotional stress and relationships or family, et cetera, that's gonna increase IL-6 or interleukin-6, which is an immune compound, which can throw our immune system out of balance. And then our immune system and our gut are intimately connected. So we wanna have healthy immune balance for healthy gut balance. Decrease in probiotics. Maybe we're not eating enough fermented foods. It could be not consuming sauerkraut or kimchi or fermented pickles. It may be, hey, maybe you should try getting a little bit of raw milk in your diet if you can tolerate dairy or adding, um, let's see, some raw cheese in your diet as well. So just getting natural probiotics from foods that you can actually tolerate. Antibiotic production, or a lot of people are consuming antibiotics. And what we have is these rebound overgrowths. We wipe everything out in the gut and if you talk to any gardener, if you go in a garden and just wipe out everything in the garden, the first thing it tends to grow back, unless you intentionally planted seeds, are gonna be weeds. Just wipe out a garden. Weeds never have to grow on their own. You never have to water or actually plant seeds. Weeds will just grow. So if you just wipe out a garden, the first thing you're gonna see coming back are gonna be weeds. So that's a very common thing that we see. So we wanna really come in there and make sure if antibiotic use is an issue, we wanna really clean up the gut and intentionally put good seeds back in or good pre and probiotics back in to make sure infections are clean. Infections are also a big issue because infections tend to be opportunistic. A lot of these things tend to be opportunistic, meaning when these things happen, we start to see decrease HCL production. We start to see decrease in enzymes and we start to see a decrease in nutrition. Because you aren't what you eat, you are what you eat, break down, absorb, and assimilate. So all of these things here, what they're doing is this, they're creating a downward cycle like this, and they're pushing us in this direction, right? A lot of infections that we see, they're opportunistic, meaning they tend to happen due to a, someone that already has a compromised immunity. There are some people that may, may hear stories of someone getting bit by a tick, and that may be enough, even with perfect health, to drive someone into that episode. But I've also heard stories, myself included, where I've gotten bitten by ticks or gotten infections, and I was able to recover with very little issue. So everyone's a little different. The more stress we have, that may allow that infection to be the linchpin that really knocks us over, or we may be able to 
bounce back from it because we're following all these other things to a T. But some people though, if they have an infection, that can be enough to prevent them from healing and coming back even when these things are addressed. We may be doing these things really well after the fact, but it may be the infection that needs to be addressed for us to fully heal. That's a really important aspect. So all of these things are happening here and they're pushing us in the pathogenic side. So if you're a person that's struggling with some of these issues and has some gut issues or feels like their, their gut bacteria may be off and has, having some of these gut symptoms legitimately, um, I hope this video helped you and kind of gave you some action items of where to start and can see how you're shifting a lot of your bacteria into the negative side versus the positive. And if you want to get some more information on the next steps that you can take, click on the link in the video here or in the information below the video and that will at least be able to give you some good action steps on where to go next and how to get you better. Again, this is Dr. Justin signing off. Please feel free and subscribe to get more videos just like this. Thanks and have a great day.